We've had multiple sources confirm that an event file, and it's important that you know that's what it's called, an event file, was created by the NTC, the National Terrorism uh, Center. It was accusing Abdul Rahman Ali Al-Harbi of being involved in a terrorist activity related to the Boston bombing. That's what the file or the event file actually reads. The file was created on Tuesday, the day after the bombing, at 4 p.m. So you understand, it, this event file was created at 4 p.m. on Tuesday. That is, after talking to the suspect in the hospital, saying, the FBI confirming that he was in custody, and they were questioning the suspect. They questioned him, I believe, for about nine hours. Then there, you had to call, the FBI had to call a, a judge and say, we need a search warrant. The judge had to say, well, what, on what grounds? You could not have convinced a judge to get a search warrant if he said, well, he's just Saudi Arabian. Excuse me? You had to have more to get a search warrant. They searched his house for five hours and took things from his house as evidence. They also grilled his um, uh, roommates for five hours, spent five hours, took them downtown and spoke to them for five solid hours. Now, that sounds to me like there should be some civil lawsuits if if that was all there was nothing there. Then to get a 2123B, an event file opened up, they had to go back to the NTC at about noon and spend at least two hours in front of a panel of judges and present physical evidence and say, this is what we found, this is what this guy is doing, this is who he is, we have to put him on Section 2123B, which makes him deemed a terrorist and a threat to the United States. This is not something that you phone in. This was a panel. Any, I have spoken to people who have been through this and say this is, this is one of the hardest things that you can get anyone to do in the government. If you go, it's like a root canal. The prosecutors have, have told us that it is like a root canal to be able to go through and get one of these 2123Bs. So by 4 o'clock on Tuesday, they had that. Since then, according to the various agencies investigating the bombing, Al Harbi has gone from the suspect in custody to material witness to witness to victim. His association with the NTC report has been explained various times by the FBI, ICE, and DHS as a completely false accusation, a case of mistaken identity, and finally yesterday, the DHS calling it basically a rush to judgment on the part of the FBI who the FBI was in chaos following the bombing. Now, if I'm in the FBI, I certainly would hear what they said to the blaze yesterday. If I'm in the FBI, because I believe the FBI knew, is trying to do the right thing, and the FBI goes and they tell John King, because that's who John King said his sources were, the FBI. There was another reporter at CNN that also verified from two other FBI sources that they had a quote their words, not the FBI's, dark-skinned man in custody. I see the FBI looks like they're being set up. They admitted he was placed on the no-fly list for the first time, but said that it was the FBI's mistake. Hear that, FBI? In fact, DHS, apparently so confident that the FBI made a mistake in originally thinking that he was a suspect, that they told the Blaze yesterday they didn't even know where Al Harby was anymore. They are so convinced that this guy's not even a suspect, and it was the FBI's problem, that when we asked where he, where he was, they said, we don't know, maybe he's still in the hospital. We're not following him at all. They did tell us that they were deporting a Saudi national, but only a poor schmuck that they say was at the port of Boston after the bombing buying dates. And apparently the DHS, because that's all the information they'll give us uh, on him, apparently the DHS thinks that you should be deported if you were buying dates. He was detained. They found out that he had a visa that had expired, so they're sending him home. 
By the way, they had no explanation on why Al Harbi had originally been given the worst designation possible to de- uh, uh, on a, a deportation form, Section 2123B, terrorism. They're treating that file as it doesn't exist. But we and members of Congress know it does because members of Congress have it in hand. We'd like to ask the FBI what it was they found in their nine-hour search of Abdul Rahman Ali, um, uh, Ali Harbi's apartment or at the scene of the bombing that led them to ask to get the Section 2123B terrorist activities designation. Every expert in the field we've talked to has said that they're that that's a charge that is nearly impossible to get approved, yet somehow the FBI did it. And then 24 hours later, after two visits at the White House by Saudi ministers, the order was rescinded. Mr. Mueller, can you explain how all of this happened? Can the Does the FBI have an explanation on that? The House Committee on Homeland Security would like to know, and I'm sure the American public would like to know as well. By the way, if you're in the American public and you'd like to know, I would suggest you call your congressman now and you ask why your congressman is not demanding that the House Committee on Homeland Security is supported because they, the members of the Homeland Security House Committee, are demanding a private confidential uh, closed door meeting with the DHS to find out these answers DHS won't answer we should also ask for the FBI so I would suggest that you call your congressman now hurry please limited time on Friday a source at ICE who refused to be named also told the blaze and other media outlets that our reporting was a clear-cut case of mistaken identity, that there were two Saudi nationals that have been in custody with the same or similar name, that the Abdul Rahman Ali Al-Harbi that had been held in custody in the hospital following the bombing, the one we reported had an event file declaring him a terrorist, just wasn't the same Abdul Rahman Ali Al-Harbi. There's another not connected with the Boston bombing and that he was being deported. Yesterday, DHS told the Blaze there was no mistaken identity, that it was just a mistake of the FBI. We'd like to know which one is it. When asked why Al Harbi was in Boston when his visa was issued for attendance to uh, go to school in Ohio, Finley, Ohio, DHS initially said again, that there were two Abdul Rahman Ali Al Harbis, one in Finley, Ohio, and the other one lived in Boston. Yesterday told us, no, there is only one, but he he transferred from Ohio school to Boston. No harm, no foul there. Except the University of Finley has no record of that transfer. A few other questions that we have to sweep up on. Um, who are the other two men that are living in the Revere, Massachusetts apartment occupied by Al Harbi? The ones the FBI spent five hours with. Can you tell us anything about that? For, well, here's one question that we would like to know. Do they have the legal right to be in this, um, in this country? Are they supposed to be here? Have either of them overstayed their visa? Where are they from? Might be worth looking into if i were an ins agent yeah that's gonna happen back to the fbi did the recent decision to purge the manuals and this is really important any member of the fbi you should kick this one up the chain of command or you should call your congressman and if you have any information or we'll protect you as a source if you want to call the blaze Did the recent decision to purge the manuals of uh, sections dealing with Islamic extremism and the resulting change in investigative techniques have anything to do with with us not being able to track the two men accused of the Boston bombings? Because you warned Russia to keep an eye on these guys, and then you apparently didn't. Now that would tell me that you were either incompetent Or you're going to take the fall for being incompetent because nobody's really talking about the rule change where you purged the manuals so you couldn't follow those guys. I'm wondering if we've ever learned anything at all from 9-11. I'm wondering if we have exactly the same problems 
with the FBI and Department of Homeland Security now is just making it worse. I'm wondering which one of you guys is going to be the first to throw the other under the bus. Boy, that's going to be fun to watch. Who takes the blame for this one in the end? I'm sure it's not the White House. DHS Secretary Janet Napolitano, could you please ask uh, or answer the question, why are you refusing to give even a classified briefing about the Saudi national or the nationals or lack thereof of Saudi nationals or even maybe at time, maybe even the lack of evidence that there even is a country called Saudi Arabia? Can you can you please answer the question why you won't give a classified briefing about the Saudi national or anyone that was going to be deported? Not to me. You don't need to give it to me or the blaze, but the committee on Homeland Security. I'm, I'm just thinking that the House committee has been asking and you won't give it to them. I'm just wondering why, because, man, if there's just some things that just need to be cleared up, why don't you just clear it up? But why don't you have it out in the open? Because they have the documents. If if you haven't seen the documents, which you claim you haven't seen, if you haven't seen the documents, they have them. In fact, they asked you yesterday to produce them. You haven't responded to that either. I wonder why. Because, boy, this is, seems really detrimental, doesn't it? I mean, it seems really bad. Because it would be so easy just to clear this up. You've got these people in Congress. They should be getting back to business because you say this is a waste of time. It would be so easy if you just produced the document and gave it to Congress so they know that you're not lying. Because they have the document. Just show them your document. That's it. They've asked politely. So to the FBI, ICE... And the DHS. I'm thinking that maybe you guys should get together. Maybe you guys should get your story straight. Maybe you should try again. Because I I think maybe you can begin to understand why the American public might be a little confused and how easy it would be just to come together on Capitol Hill and talk to the congressman and just answer those questions. Just Guys, all you do is you you put it, you, you just call his name up, you put it on your screen, and then you hit print screen. <laughs> Some people have done that already. You should try it and then come to Congress so we can just figure this mess out. Because otherwise, I have this sneaking suspicion one of your departments is going to start being thrown under the bus by the other departments. <laughs> it's a strange I forgot. The FBI is already being thrown under the bus by the DHS and Janet Napolitano. Hmm. You should think about that one at lunch.